This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The NFL is officially back tonight. It is the Hall of Fame game between the Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. And hey, maybe the preseason, but it is still NFL football. We get to watch on our screens, potentially play some wagers on as well, if you are so inclined. Today, we're going to break down the Hall of Fame game. Talk about what we've seen historically in this game as far as scoring totals and things like that. If you're trying to play some wagers and dig into coaching tendencies of the Bears and Texans, coaching staffs during the preseason, and outline some bets that I like for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research, here to break down the Hall of Fame game for tonight, breaking down my top bets at FanDuel Sportsbook as the Texans take on the Bears. We'll dive into all that here in just one second, but first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Yesterday, I broke down my top divisional futures at FanDuel Sportsbook for divisional bets that I like based on the current odds there. Went division by division, breaking down my thoughts on them, which I'm passing on, which ones I want to target as well. A couple more futures shows coming up throughout the summer. To get those as they're posted, make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, we even say five-star rating and review as well. And of course, he shows on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a thumbs up there. Go to FanDuel.com slash watch, log into their FanDuel account, or check out the FanDuel TV Plus app on your Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. The dog days are here, and the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster of bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snag bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, and even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of major. League baseball must be 18 plus in DC and 21 plus in president select states. Opt in required wager requirements apply. Bonus is awarded as non withdrawable bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG, Colorado, DC, Iowa, Kentucky. Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 888 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org/slash chat Connecticut, 1 809 with in Indiana, 1 800 522. 4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's take a look now at this Hall of Fame game between the Texans and the Bears. We'll dig into the betting markets here in a second. But first, it's important to lay out the key tenets of betting preseason games. Unless you have key info that you want to act upon, the key things are who is playing and what are the coaching tendencies of the two teams involved. Do they care about the preseason? We know people like John Harbaugh do, but not everyone does. Sean McVay very much does not care. So it's important to know who's playing, are the starters playing, and do the coaches care? For this game, we're not going to see the starters. Uh, Caleb Williams not going to play, nor will CJ Stroud. Tyson Bagent will start for the Bears. We saw him in action last year and honestly wasn't that bad. So I think that's someone encouraging here. As the Texans, Case Keenum has missed practices recently, did return to practice on, I believe, Tuesday. Uncertain what his status is, but D'Amico Ryan said they want to see what the young guys can do. So I'm expecting quite a bit of Davis Mills in this game. Mills got replaced for a reason, but also an NFL level talent. So I think the overall outlook at quarterback is not too bad for these two teams. Probably not going to see Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Stefan Diggs, guys like that. So we're not going to see the starters, and that does matter. But what we have seen is that 
both these teams have at least somewhat cared about the preseason. Now that could be because both coaches are a bit on the younger side, had to prove themselves. Maybe that was playing an influence here. Two seasons of data for Matt Eberflus as the Bears head coach and what he has done in the two week one preseason games he has played 33 and 40 total points in those games bears won those games by five and six points respectively and overall Eberflus's games have been relatively high scoring he has had uh those games have featured 33 or more points in all six games and they've gone over 40 in four out of six games bears in those games four and two record they won all three in his first season as head coach and then uh went one and two last year as far as the texans go D'Amico ryan's made his debut last year and those games were lower scoring 29 31 and 30 points scored in those games total for this game is 31 and a half so based on the texans you think we might be skewing towards a lower scoring game but the bears again with Eberflus as head coach have tended to play in some pretty higher scoring games. And it does seem like they care, especially with Eberflus being in the hot seat this year. I know they're not playing the starters, but we could see some push in this one from the bears. So overall, generally optimistically, we could see some fun football for tonight. The key caveat though, is that the hall of fame game is always different because it is the first preseason game of the year. And It gives each team an additional preseason game to their allocation, which means they don't need to push their guys out there. So I think it is important to also look at uh, the scoring history for the the Hall of Fame game specifically. We can look at the past 10 years of data. That includes uh, two cancellations. So we got to go back to 2012 to get 10 years. In that sample, the average scoring point total in the Hall of Fame game is 30 and a half points with the median at 31 and a half. And The median being 31 and a half is intriguing because that is exactly where the market is for tonight. 31 and a half is a total as the Texans take on the Bears. And I'm guessing the preseason history, the Hall of Fame game history is playing a key role in determining that. So Texans have been in lower scoring games with Ryan's defensive head coach. Even Flus is too, but his games have been higher scoring. That brings us to the first bet I like in tonight's game. Because of how high scoring games have been under Eberflus at the Bears, I kind of think there actually is value in the over at 31 and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook. As mentioned, that's right in line what we've seen historically from Hall of Fame games, which means you can play things pretty straight up. We haven't seen a ton of, it hasn't always been lower scoring games in this one. The past couple of years, 35 and 38 points in the Hall of Fame game, that's been when they've had the more truncated preseasons. So with only a four game preseason lob and after accounting for the hall of fame game we have still seen some scoring in this one uh 19 and 1 38 and 35 across three games so two of the three have gone over this total 31 and a half as mentioned the bears have played in a lot of exciting games in their preseason games uh with the ebra 38 or more points in all but one game 33 in the other so they've gone over in all six games with ebra flus Texans have gone under in all three with D'Amico Ryans, but hoping the Bears can play an influence here. But also more importantly, I think we're going to see some NFL level talent at quarterback across Bajent, Davis Mills, Brett Rippon should play a bit as well. Tim Boyle is what he is, but like, again, he has been on an NFL roster for a long time. So we're not seeing undrafted rookies for the most part at quarterback in this game. Also pretty good depth at pass catcher across both these teams. I like Xavier Hutchinson quite a bit uh, for the Texans. John Mechie should get some run as well. And the Bears have some former decently high-end picks with Tyler Scott and Velas Jones who are not going to be in their top three to open up the year. So depth at quarterback, depth at pass catcher. I think both these teams should be able to be functional in offense and that they may be enough to get us to the over here. So I want the over 31 and a half minus 105 as my first bet in tonight's Hall of Fame game. The second bet I like is actually a pretty fun market that FanDuel is offering as opposed to doing player level uh, player props. They're doing these specials where you can bet how many receiving yards Houston Texans will have. You can bet how many rushing yards they'll have and things like that. So as opposed to player level props, you can bet on what the full team will, will do. So you're not having to predict who will get that yardage and stuff like that. That can be advantageous if you have information on those things, but I don't. So I wouldn't be looking there anyway. This market specifically, I am okay with checking out. And the one that stands out most to me 
is the Chicago Bears over 100 and a half rushing yards in this game. And that comes down to a part, uh, the fact that I think we will see some scoring in this game. I think we should see some functional offenses. And a lot of that stemmed from the passing offenses. But the Bears also have depth at running back. Travis Homer seems like he probably will not play, which means we could see a decent amount of either Khalil Herbert or Roshan Johnson in this game. Both those guys have talent, but are not the starter for the team right now at DeAndre Swift being in there. So I think we'll see some good stuff out of the running backs, but also Bajan will run himself. He started five games in the NFL or started four, four games last year. And he had 20 plus rushing yards in two of those. He had 70 yards on eight attempts in week nine. So that counts towards this total as well. If we're trying to get the bears over a hundred and plus a hundred and a half rushing yards. In general, Eberflus's teams have been willing to run. I know this was it was with a different offensive coordinator, but in the the six games with Eberflus as the head coach, the Bears have gone over 100 and a half rushing yards in four out of six games, and one of those is at exactly 100, so barely under in that one. They've averaged 112.3, and their median is also 112. So all those numbers pretty well above this mark of 100.5. The Texans. You know, they're not a a bad defense by any means, and they did do a lot of things last year to try to shore up their rush defense, but I don't know how much that'll matter in this game specifically. So it's more about intent, and I think the Bears are intriguing to go over 100 and a half rushing yards based on the history of the Ibrahim head coach, based on the fact I think we'll see at some level of offense in this game, if it is on the ground, which does hurt our chances of getting over because it does keep the clock rolling. I think we'll see effective offense in this game. That's kind of overall thing. I want to dig into now these bets may not play the best together. Cause again, running the football keeps the clock running and that correlates well with unders. And that's important to remember. But again, I think that we're betting on effective offense. So they may not play the best together, but I like them both individually, the over 31 and a half and the over hundred and a half rushing yards for the bears. And I'm willing to pay, play both those straight up. So to me, if we're betting this Hall of Fame game between the Bears and the Texans, I want to go with the over for the game at 31 and a half and the Bears over 100 and a half rushing yards. Uh, both, uh, that is minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Over for the game at 31 and a half is minus 105. So a quick look at the Hall of Game game for tonight, but it should be a fun game. Should you see some football back on our TV screens. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, our divisional future show is up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. If you want to see the four bets that I like there, go to the Covering the Spread podcast feed on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Hit subscribe if you like what you hear. Leave us a five-star rating and review as well. Don't forget, thumbs up on YouTube and uh, check us out over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you got any questions for me, I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets in the Hall of Fame game. Enjoy having football back in our lives. We'll talk to you once again uh, later on next week. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. (laughs) 